hey guys I'm back and today I've got a wonderful gift and surprise that I super hey guys I'm back I couldn't wait to do this so I've jumped on and it's kind of a flip through it is a review because although I've not owned it for very long at all I have spent a couple of days just working with this solely. This is the wonderful, the gorgeous and I think the old as well, Beasts of Albion by Miranda Gray. Now one of my very very lovely friends from the Instagram community reached out to me and said that they didn't feel like they were particularly connecting to this deck after a long time of having it and they knew that I freaking love <laughs> animal decks. I'm super biased, right? You guys must know by now. I love animal decks. I must do my animal deck collection because I think that it would be really fun for other animal lovers out there. Anyway... I of course said, are you sure? <laughs> I have never seen this deck before. I straight away went and looked it up. It's not big on you um not on YouTube. It's not big on Instagram, which I love. I love having something that's more of like a rare find. And I love that it's old. I freaking adore this kind of I don't know about anyone else, but for some reason this reminds me of Harry Potter. The checkered backgrounds um <laughs> i just was really really excited about this and getting to work with a deck that was based on the british animals because obviously i've got a lot of decks that focus on animals from different countries and different cultures and this is not one that i had I really, really wish I could do more than send her thanks. Um, you really, I mean, she knows. She completely lit up my month with this beautiful gesture. And I'm not going to show you the inside, but it came with this beautiful card with cats on. Yay. If anyone wants to win my heart for whatever reason. <laughs> kitty cats, kitty cats. This has been sitting on my my table, my secondary altar ever since. She sent it with this gorgeous baggie, which matches the backs, as hopefully you can see. And these, they, f they just feel great. It's a really good baggie. It's much thicker than it looks. And it's definitely, they, they will 100% stay in here. As I say, I'm kind of going to flick through the cards. I have put them in an order so that I can add a bit of a review to the end of it. There may be things that I learn about this deck at a later stage, but for now, let's just roll with the fact that I wanted to show it off. I'm excited and I have already learned some really cool stuff about this deck, so I'm going to dive straight in and show you the cards. So here's the backs of the cards absolutely gorgeous i was quite surprised because i hadn't seen the backs and they are very different to the fronts but i love it you guys will come to know that backs really don't bother me anyway the medicine cards the backs completely different to the fronts i quite like that it's quirky and different i really love the color and the moon vibe that is giving off the card stock is an excellent size because oracle decks are often so so big this cardstock is around similar, if not the same size, as the Wildwood Tarot. Not too big for an Oracle deck at all, really easy to hold. Its cardstock is glossed, but it's not it's not super shiffer glossed, it's midway glossed. That's the only way I can explain it. It will catch some lighting, but generally it's not horrendous at all. They they glide but they don't slip the cardstock is by far why is it always the older decks that have the better cardstock i don't know about you guys but 
I'm really starting to find this quite frequently, whether it's an old deck of mine in comparison to new decks I buy or even being gifted these beautiful older decks. Let's flip it over. Also, the cardstock is a lovely thickness. Really, really colourful. I mean, she's looked after this deck amazingly, so I can't thank her enough. Let's just go through the cards first and enjoy the animals, the amazing backgrounds, and what you'll notice, which quite amuses me, is all of these animals have got some sort of bling on them. And when I say bling, I mean like... Um, some sort of encrusted belt or jewellery or something like that. I have split them into their colours for a later part of the review, but for now, we've got the gorgeous lion, bee, the horse, aren't oh, the backgrounds fabulous, spider, and the artwork, I must say, does... It's somewhat reminiscent to me of the medicine cards in that I'm hoping that's focused in the the artwork style in particular almost realistic like the sketches and drawings that you would have got in a nature book before they started being replaced with pictures they've really got so much detailing in them so the weasel and you can see all of the strands of fur and look they're wearing a little bracelet and like, it reminds me of a pirate bill. The fox, my spirit animals in the deck, yeah. Wren. We've got a boar, very piratey earrings going on. And you'll notice they've all got these checkered backgrounds and different patterns along the borders, which I'll go into. And then they've got a kind of I don't know what you'd refer to that as, maybe an emblem? They've got some sort of, some of them are simple, so one of them is the moon. This one, it looks like, it kind of reminded me of a dream catcher, but it also looks like an instrument that's got animal skin on the outside and then you twizzle it, and I can't remember the name at all, and it's got a ball inside that rattles or a few balls. This is the raven. The mouse with another pirate earring. It's so cute. <laughs> squirrel. I was so happy to see the red squirrel because we had red squirrels until the grey ones bullied and chased them away. And it's not very often that I get to see red squirrels anymore. Sometimes I see grey squirrels and you can see there's kind of an amalgamation going on. Maybe they've Crossbred, I really don't know. We've got snake. But we've got this ram's head ring or bracelet going on. Dragon. We do have a couple of mystical animals in here, which obviously you wouldn't have seen knocking around. But one of the things that this deck does is it takes into consideration myths from the area and various other things. We've got owl, so you can see here it's the moon. And this is my other favourite. I mean, they're all so gorgeous, it's hard to pick. Fox, spirit animal, and to be honest, actually, and I'd never even thought about it or given it enough credit because I've got so many spirit animal decks and animal energies and medicines, and there's not a cat in any of them. There's lions and tigers and etc. But no domestic cat. Domestic cat is so one of my spirit animals. This cat is adorable. This deck has busted my heart open. I'm so soppy and I absolutely adore it. Salmon. You snuggly little bear. They look like they're ready to hibernate. Cockerel. I love the mixture of animals. Bat. Yes. I was ooing and ahhing over this card when it first came. The day it came, my partner was actually home. And I was gushing. He's, he doesn't do tarot or anything like that. He just listens to me talk about it and supports me with it. 
and I was saying, look at this, look at this. Now, he's very, oh, I can't think of the word straight in terms of liking regular domestic animals and nothing that would be considered creepy. And I was like, look how awesome this bat is. Look at the detail. And he was like, it's really creepy. And I was like, no, this, my friend, is not creepy. This is fluffy and cute. That's how I feel about it. We've got Bull, got a bit of rage going on here. We've got Brock, which is a badger, loving the old school name. He's got his own staff, check it out. And what looks to be like a little bit of amethyst around the neck. Stag, I cannot wait for my friend to see this card. She loves stag. I don't know if she realises, but stag's definitely her spirit animal. And this card, she's just gonna adore it. Hedgehog, another one of my little favorite creatures. We've got goose. And I don't think I've got a goose in any of my other decks either. I love it when you get an animal deck. I love it anyway, but I love it when it's got animals that you didn't already have because it really opens up being able to work with more energies. Obviously you can anyway, but it's nice to have that visualisation. Crane with a little baggy. And then our other mystical beauty, which is the unicorn. Love, and you can see all of the little unicorns behind. In fact, yes, I didn't even notice that they have different things behind in the pictures. We've got the hair. This is great because on an Instagram live around maybe a month ago now, someone asked me, have you got any hair animal cards? Flick through, flick through, flick through, and I found rabbit, 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 and no hair. So, yes, my friend, I now have hair, and I will read it to you. If you see this video, message me. We've got swan. Eagle. Beautiful. Toad. Loving this again, that it's not frog, that it's toad, and it opens up more animal messages. I can understand why decks, there's only so many animals you can have and they say, all books they'll say, if you want toad, see frog. And I get it, but in my head, I'm like, no. <laughs> a toad is a toad and a frog is a frog. <laughs> I'm a little bit fussy. We've got dove. Absolutely beautiful. I'd have loved to see pigeon in here. I do have a pigeon in one of my animal decks, but it's a tarot deck and the pigeon's impaled. It's it's either five or ten of souls. I think it's ten. Yeah, so it's sad. I want a happy pigeon. If anyone knows of a deck that's got a pigeon in it, let me know. Butterfly. Otter. But I love that they've managed to capture the motion still with the little bubbles. Honestly, these cards. We've got cow. And these these mummers bring in the energy, loving it. We got pig. With their little piglets. Dolphin. It very much reminds me, it gives me an Ace of Cups vibe. Wolf. Because you can't have one without a wolf in it. I love that. Look at the detail. They're just gorgeous. And then last but not least, Redbreast, aka the Robin. How awesome is that, you guys? In total, there are 36 cards, I believe. 39, sorry. In total, there are 39 cards. There was a 40th card originally printed with them, which was a blank card, which would have had a border and this on the background, but nothing else on it, so that you could add an animal to it 
not a problem that that's not in here at all and to be honest I've got my nine medicine cards blank still and I haven't used those I am so psyched to have this deck and that's why I want to take you through it a little bit more bear with me and I will be back and I'll explain the deck to you I'm back and as you can see the cards are broken off into three different colour groupings and there is so much detail to this deck I'm not going to do it all justice today I'm still learning but here are the basics to the deck I don't know if you can get hold of this I looked out of curiosity and there was one seller selling it for a ridiculous amount of money First we have the Kingdom of Strength, which is represented by the red. We have the Kingdom of Wisdom, which is represented in green. And then we have the Kingdom of Purity, which is represented by the blue. That's your first key to understanding the cards and their colours. Each of these kingdoms is represented by a, a Beast of Albion. And the representations are the ones that you can see. They have an, they have a different setup to the rest of the cards because, and I will show you the book, the cards have groupings that they fit into, different principles and different positions. So the groups have different principles that they're set up into, four in each of them. And within each of the four principles, they have three positions. But the spirit of that specific group is separate and that's why it governs um, a different type of energy message that you get. Just to give you an example of how the different positions work, I've laid out three cards for you. As we know, the spirit of each suit is separate in this case it's the lion and then the other 12 cards are split into four groups of three the principle of this grouping is creation so they come under the same trine that's what it's referred to in the book as a trine and within these trines there's positions one two and three Position 1, which in this case is the B, is the position of the harmonic self. This represents the lowest harmonic in the principle of creation. Then we've got position 2, which in this case is the horse. This is the position of the harmonic inner self. This is the middle. And then we've got the highest harmonic which is beyond the self, taking into consideration others in creation, and this is spider. As you can see, there are a lot of layers that have been added into this deck. I have done a reading using the layers for myself, and I have done a reading doing a one-card pull. They completely work. If you pull the B, you can still take the message of the B without thinking about the position in particular etc and so forth but it is a really really interesting layer because if you were considering how you're you're working within the triangle and within the principle and within the kingdom it really could especially if you journaled I guess add a layer of depth about how you're moving through those energies just to give you an example, this is what I'm currently looking at, which is a breakdown of every single one. Here we have the front of the book, and then as we move in, we've got this gorgeous piece of artwork, which I adore. It's got the coming together of a lot of the different animals in the deck, and then this goddess-like figure encompassing all of them. As I say, this book's by Miranda Gray. We've got some acknowledgements. The contents. This is probably the bit that people would struggle with. The contents are separated into the trines and groupings that I was telling you about just now. And due to that, 
when you're looking for a specific message if you are going to read from the book you kind of need to refer back to the contents because there isn't any numbers on the cards and there isn't an alphabetical order to it. Once I get to know the deck I work with it sometimes without the book anyway but once I get to know it when I do want to use the deck then I'll probably know where the card meanings are and I won't be that inclined to pick up the book but I can imagine it would be a tiny bit frustrating for people if they were new to working with the deck and especially if they were new to working with animal energies I know people prefer some form of numbering on the cards as you can see once we've gone through the intro which is where we were discussing the trines and the actual card layouts we've got the breakdown for each a discussion on totem and companion animals we've got card spreads the spiral path which is actually another layer that this brings in there are so many layers to this deck it's amazing it's going to be a, a long journey of study even though it's a small book I think let's have a look well when we get to the bibliography we've got 169 pages but it is full of really useful, really interesting information and it explains why they're called Beasts of Albion and how it's used Britain to term what was once known as Britain because some things have changed over time. This brings in different myths and various stories and different things like that which is how the dragons and unicorns have come to be in the deck gives you a bit of a discussion about the cards and as I say this is the bit that we went through and then we go into animal guides for the animals that aren't the representing energy for that specific kingdom they're all set out the same way and it's really really helpful to start to get to know them so we've got mouse the kingdom is strength we would know that because it would be a red card or, or brownie colour they're not totally uniform which again I quite like then we've got the trion which is the specific principle that this card is looking at so the three cards will be all in growth the next three and the teaching which is a message from this specific card is seeker of the path we've got a whole host of mythology and folklore it's so fascinating to read that. I really appreciate that part of it. The actual messages are smaller, but the folklore and mythology really adds to it. And as I say, if you already work with animal energy, then you probably have enough of knowledge about the animal and their experience. This is something that I much prefer to see in the books because I want to know where they got their information from, how they're relating to this what history they've explored and then we move over and we've got the characteristics which have got all these lovely keywords and a brief little message so this would be the card message portion and then we've got the spiral path meaning so if you do want to work within the spiral path then there's this extra part for you and as you can see we move on so the next three well, the next two from this card will both be in the trine of growth, but with different teachings. And as you can see, a couple of pages, if not more, of information for every single card. We're still in the kingdom of strength, but the trine changes, so we're in challenge. And so on and so forth, and that's how the book goes on. Now, if I can, I'd like to show you the energy card. Here we go. So there's your other 12 cards are laid out like this. But then we've got our final energy card, which is the spirit of strength. And so therefore, it's not got a try and, and it's simply got the teaching that it falls under. However, the message is very much the same. You've got the mythology and folklore, and you've got the characteristics and spiral path meaning. It's really quite juicy, especially considering we've got 39 cards in the deck, and look how thick this book is. Now, 
Then we move into part two, which is about totem and companion animals. And this explains to you about what they mean by totem animal, companion animals. For me, companion animals, what they're saying is spirit energies that come in and out, as opposed to something that's been there with you from the beginning. A totem animal is supposed to be an energy that you were born with, an animal that will represent your life's path and how you take it in an entirety and whilst that can change it's often believed that that will remain with you forever and as we move through it's got spreads now one of the fascinating things this book does is it gives you a sample reading for every single spread using the cards and breaking them down and the sample reading isn't small by any stretch of the imagination which is really quite helpful. We've got a visualisation here, which most of you all know. I love it when they add stuff like that to a book and how long it is. It says here to record the visualisation with yourself saying it and then you can sit back and listen to it in a meditative way. And then we follow, I must be careful with this book, I'm not pulling it too far away from its spine. And then we move into the card spreads might try and stick that down a little bit so we already had a card spread in the finding the totem or exploring that and then we've got some more one based on the trines and then we've got an exploration of the spiral path now I'm still coming to terms with the spiral path I therefore won't specifically take you through it but as you can see as you move through the spiral path you move through the various kingdoms strength wisdom and purity so our red our green and our blue cards and it really does have some fascinating little tidbits of information of how to come to terms with working with them in this way and another little breakdown another visualization and then we come to the end of the book how wonderful is this book absolutely the book and, and the deck will be treasured absolutely treasured and my little card and my baggie Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for my wonderful gift. I didn't know if you'd want to be named on here, so you know who you are. Thank you a hundred times. I'm really going to enjoy this deck. And I think that it's an amazing gift that you sought me out because you know how much I love animals. And definitely if I ever get the chance to do that for someone in the future, I would also love to do that for someone. It's, um, it's a really beautiful thing to do if you're if you're not connecting with a deck yourself. I really wanted to show that off you guys. That's me done for now. If you've got any questions about it, then do feel free to comment below. Other than that, I'll catch you later.